Okay. It's a reverent take on sacred music because I know better than to look at um, a sacred song from Julian de la Chica and take it at face value. Um, I know there's a lot more significance there and more of more of a prompting message for the audience to take in. In looking at these sacred songs through a profane lens, um, Julian and I discussed how it's, it's an expression of instead of celebrating the kind of the artifice and the edifice of the church, of a higher power through these prayers that have been written into music, I mean, for the past many hundreds of years, um, it's instead taking these words traditionally used to sort of humble humanity and distance humanity from the divine and instead try and find the divine within us. It's uh, for me. Profanum is like a, a tribute to, to a tribute to humanity. I think uh, when you are listening to sacred songs, you know, uh, as an album's repertoire today, 2019, uh, the first feeling is uh, to think of God or you know the church. Uh, however, uh, contrary what people may think, profanum uh, as a concept. Uh, come from a very a, a human perspective you know like the, the the power of human beings the the, the perfection of uh, the human mind the perfection of the human body I think we are celebrating all those composers and, and writers that under the influence of the church or under the influence of what they believe in they left to the war and, and you know and amazing incredible work of beauty and, and meaning. type of person that looks forward the, the next step, you know, someone that uh, doesn't live in the past. So I was not sure about uh, recording earlier works, you know, uh, but then in, after the first rehearsal, I have to say that uh, 
I understood uh, Rachel's musical concept and her her new fresh uh, approach to to my music in this album. Uh, so you know, and also this is the second album that I work with Rachel on. Um, in the first one, the experimentelle and unbestimmte Lied of Opus 9, uh, the German song cycle. We had the great opportunity to, to learn a lot about each other. So, you know, in this second album, everything was uh, familiar, organic, fluido, you know, to me. So, another great opportunity to, to, to grow. in particular, you know, it's it's so naked, it's so exposed. Uh, the vocal lines, everything is, is so is so bare that I think it it, it brings the listeners in uh, with us and, and you know you kind of get to experience everything all at once and I think that's a, it's a very unique uh, it's a very unique experience. Up in a very, in a very, you know, traditional Catholic Latin family, so uh, sacred songs are quite familiar to me. Uh, also, you know, when I was living in Manizales, my my hometown in Colombia, and because you know uh, financial problems in my family, I had to to work in a church on Sundays. Uh, I think I was around fifteen. 16 perhaps uh, and, and I think uh, that is how I start to, to work in these pieces you know like uh, like for these special ceremonies where, where where I was hired to play the organ in. so you know actually there is a, a very funny story about my mother um, I think I was looking around an Ave Maria you know for a wedding and I guess I was tired of the uh, sugar Ave Maria of course, so uh, my mother says something like, uh, Julian, but uh, don't you want to be a composer? And I say, yes, mom, of course. And she say, okay, so go and, and compose an Ave Maria. I was in shock. And I, say, I remember I say, yeah, why not? Let's do it. in Spain and uh, there I have to, to play the organ uh, but not only at the school but also you know uh, uh, the Salamanca's Cathedral which is this uh, amazing beautiful majestic building uh, 
uh, I had the, the opportunity to play there a few times. So, you know, and for example, during my time in Salamanca, I remember uh, uh, we had to, to, to learn uh, the, the Johann Gospel, you know, and I was in love with, with the text. You know, in, in principio erat perpun, et perpun erat aputeum, et uh, Deus erat verbum. Wow, so powerful. So, so I remember I said I, 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 I have, I had to, to, to do something with, with, with these words. juxtaposed sort of a classical uh, vocal sound mixed with um, the various beats and um, that's just the different layers of electronic music that are imposed on several of the pieces on this album it's it's such a fascinating combination and for I, when used well, which in this album it truly is, um, it conveys the most incredible sense of, of power. studio and putting the accompaniment together, he had what could only be called a flash of genius and uh, to evoke the, the right sense of the oratory spirit of the text, in the beginning was the word, uh, he, he added in just the most unexpected incredible electronic sounds and when he sent uh, when he sent me the, uh, the nearly finished product um, my mind was literally blown <laughs> Wonderful mezzo uh, collaborated with us on two of the tracks. That in principio with the electronic additions um, and uh, an incredibly lyrical duet called Grazia Plena. That would not be more much Yeah, it was for singing opera and focusing sound in a different way. Yeah, it's just yeah, yeah, it's, it's just very different. delighted by her rich, creamy mezzo, um, adding so much to those two duets that we sing together. Rachel Hipper is an extraordinary singer. She's an extraordinary talent, extraordinary artist, you know. Uh, she has a lot of curiosity. For me, curiosity is crucial. It's so important, especially if you are a musician. It's not only about her, you know, her technique or 
powerful, beautiful voice, but also her integrity, uh, her work ethic. It's, it's really a pleasure to work with her. Uh, you know, but also Jose Heredia, uh, Hannah, it's wow, it's, it's people very talented. It's, uh, it was a great experience for me. And, and you know, they, they push you to, to be a better composer, a better musician, and, and in some way, a uh, better human being. And I think that is, that is really amazing. Uh, I am looking forward to you know, the next project with them. I've really considered it a priority to not only develop my experience, to gain experience in the operatic realm with the traditional standard repertoire, but to look outside of the box and um, sing music from current composers, to sing new music. Um, I've had, I feel like it's been an incredible blessing being able to premiere new works. I think when you compose a cycle of sacred songs, uh, you are really not a religious person. I think that is a little uh, profound. <laughs> I mean, if God is in all of us, let's find him or her, you know, let's let's bring that out and let's live, Good let's point. live that. Yeah, good point.